Yo, dog, I heard you like reflecting. So let's have glass reflection reflect on the reflection. <laughs> I don't even fucking know what I'm doing anymore. I joke, but at times leading up to the release of this series, I felt like this was going to be a superhero show just for me. Like, not only is it called The Reflection, but hell, the freaking font that I use for my logo is... Okay, well, it's not exactly the same. There are little differences, but they're pretty damn close. It was directed by Hiroshi Nagahama, who also directed Mushishi, one of my favorite anime. And not only that, but one of the main hero characters has the exact power that I've been saying for a long time that I would want to have. Well, technically, the ability to permanently steal other powers is a power that I'd only want in a world with other supers. If there are no other supers, then I'll just take the ability to alter probability. But regardless, this series on the outset had so many elements to it that just spoke to me personally. It's like it's challenging me, like a, a lonely Kohai who just wants to be noticed. It's a shame that I don't enjoy it more. Like, I was hopeful but wary going into this. There have been plenty of anime based off of Western properties before, most of which are just a mix between unremarkable and just plain depressing. The entertainment value of which comes from how much you can just meme it up. But hey, it's got Stan Lee producing it! Stan Lee would never attach his name to something if it wasn't going to be good, right? Right? Yeah, well, Stan Lee also helped produce a comic book series about the Backstreet Boys turning into superheroes back in the early 2000s, so... Yeah. Stan's the man and all, but just because his name's on it doesn't necessarily guarantee a good product. Previously on The Reflection. Anyway, this was just old speculation before the show started, and I had high hopes! I even put it on my anticipated list for this season because of the creative team that's behind it. So let's take a gander, shall we? The gist of The Reflection is not that hard to comprehend. Big mysterious explosion happened about three years back. No one knows what caused it, but because of it, various people around the globe have received superpowers. These people, now known as Reflected, are living in the world and... Well, actually we don't know what the vast majority of them are up to. The series follows several different groups of Reflected, and for the sake of E, since I'm horrible with names, and to help prove a point I'm going to make later, I'm not actually going to use their real names. But instead I'm going to use amalgamations of characters from other works who shared the same powers. It'll make sense in a bit. So on the one side, you have Kitty Pride, who teams up with a male Anna Marie who dresses like Deadpool, and they have a bit of a backpacking trip across the United States. Trying to find a particular reflected named Wraith. Why? Heck if I know. And on the other side of the country, we have Tony Stark, former 80s singer and writer of a one-hit wonder, who got his powers and had his friends help him out with this technological suit that he uses to fly around in and do good deeds. Also, there's a group of four Japanese girls who are looking at their phones. A lot. Not really sure what their deal is. But their voice actresses have their silhouettes danced to their own music for the ED, so that's a thing. Most of the episodes are titled after characters, and while we have some somewhat interesting stories about how the superpowered explosion event affected their lives, we don't get much in the way of character arcs. Okay, there is one, the fact that there are bad reflected that are breaking out of custody and doing bad things. But we don't really know if they have a goal yet. What sets the reflection apart from both other anime of this season and other superhero anime in general is its style. Like, I don't think the majority of the animation is actually rotoscoping, but the style here is this weird cross between what someone thought was a Silver Age comic book with movement that, while being realistic, deliberately expresses very little. Remember, this was directed by Hiroshi Nagahama, who previously directed the rotoscoped anime Aku no Hana a few years back. The problem I have with it is that it just feels cheap, because the reflection is surprisingly very action-packed, yet in every battle the feeling of danger 
urgency and excitement feels muted. Something about the way that these fights are staged, the, the slow editing, the distant camera angles, and relative lack of music, it all feels really off. I feel like Gonzo on a bad day have done better. I feel like Dean could blow it out of the water. Oh, wait. So the animation studio behind this is Studio Dean, a studio that previously proved that it's possible to both save and kill anime in the same season. Like most anime studios, Dean doesn't exactly have a consistent stylistic strength across all of their works. However, it's not hard to see why the reflected looks and sounds the way it does. Since the style seems to be trying to emulate that of a comic book, it would look great on a page and not in an animated series. As much as I hate to say it, but I have to because it's kind of true, I've seen Flash animation that looked better than this. Some of that was professionally produced, sure, but that's still not great. There are moments, brief flashes, where you can see this style shine, but the vast majority of it becomes just a muddled mess, made even worse by its limited color palette. Black lines are the new in thing here. I could forgive a lot about this show if its writing, its characters, its anything was able to justify this style. See my thoughts on Kimono Friends. But that's just the thing with me. Even the good parts of the story here thus far have been done before and better. I can name several Western superhero shows that do laps around the reflection. Heck, even in anime, I can avoid bringing up the most obvious comparison and instead say that Tiger and Bunny does this shtick better. Heck, even Samurai Flamenco does it better while also making fun of the genre at the same time. And yeah, maybe that's what the reflection is going for. It definitely draws on iconic superhero imagery and tropes for a reason, like some sort of commentary on everything that has come before. So much of this series just feels like it was a passion project. Well, I have no problem with that on the surface, if the whole point of the show is just so that the creators can work with Stan Lee and say that they did, regardless of what came of it, then I question what the point is. The Reflection is a mishmash of ideas from superhero stories gone by, a style that seems on point but doesn't really know what it wants from a creative team that seems to be barking up the wrong tree. I think the narrative would be so much stronger if the show didn't put so much emphasis on an overarching plot that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. A story about chasing a reflected cold wraith is presented with no real motive. Villains are evil for the same reason villains are evil in every superhero film. Heck, they are almost cartoonishly evil, just without the same amount of gravitas, despite the tone being so subdued. It feels like an attempt to create a traditional Western superhero show avoiding any stylistic choices that make anime, anime. But in avoiding that, it almost feels like they've avoided what makes a story interesting in the first place. And that's it for me. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, I would like to thank all of my patrons for supporting me in making these videos because without them, these videos would not be possible. Specifically though, I would like to thank Hedril Leon, Bing Theo, Robert Chumzai, Calhoun Boy, Siri Yamiko, Victor Ekmark, and Joshua Garcia for being especially awesome. And until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.